regrets that he was not able to be here today but i do have a statement that i'll read and we would like the opportunity to submit more information for the record i want to thank the members of this committee for the important work you are doing on behalf of the nation i also want to thank you for the opportunity to share my views on the human spaceflight related policies of the nasa authorization acts of 2005 and 2008 the views expressed here are primarily mine but i know they are shared by a number of my colleagues I think it is important to note that the first Authorization Act of 2005, Public Law 109-155, was the product of a Republican-led Congress, and the second Authorization Act of 2008, Public Law 110-422, was the product of a Democratically-led Congress. Yet in both cases, the intent was the same, to enable NASA to succeed on its current path toward completion of the International Space Station utilize the station to carry out world-class research, retire the space shuttle after completing its remaining flights without the constraint of a predetermined date, and develop a new launch system capable of taking humans beyond low Earth orbit, a feat the shuttle cannot do for the first time since the 1970s. In both our authorizations, we allocated more money than the administration requested because in our opinion, NASA was being asked to do too much with too little. I am concerned that we cannot continue to be a preeminent spacefaring nation without adequate administration support and appropriate funding. One of the most important issues facing NASA and indeed our nation is the impending retirement of the space shuttle and the subsequent five-year gap in independent U.S. access to the $100 billion International Space Station. With the NASA Authorization Act of 2005, Congress endorsed the development of the new spacecraft and launch vehicles and I stress launch vehicles, plural, with the goal of launching the new system, quote, as close to 2010 as possible, unquote. In the NASA Authorization Act of 2008, Congress established the new system as a priority by stating, quote, developing United States human space flight capabilities to allow independent American access to the International Space Station and to explore beyond low Earth orbit is a strategically important national imperative, emphasis added. And all prudent steps should thus be taken to bring the Orion Crew Exploration Vehicle and the Ares-1 Crew Launch Vehicle to full operational capability as soon as possible, and to ensure the effective development of a U.S. heavy lift launch capabilities for missions beyond low Earth orbit, unquote. As a result, the Act sought to accelerate the development of the new system by authorizing an additional $1 billion in FY 2009. Looking longer term, we are very concerned that the current budget request has eliminated funding for the Ares 5 heavy lift launcher and the Altair lunar lander, without which America is unable to explore beyond low Earth orbit. The NASA Authorization Act of 2008 also recognized the Space Shuttle's critical role in completing and utilizing the International Space Station and added one additional mission, if it could be done safely, to deliver the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. As authorizers, we are concerned that NASA may be unable to complete the remaining shuttle missions, including the AMS flight, before the end of 2010. Unless the administration and the Congress provide funds commensurate with extension, the agency could be forced to take resources away from the development of the Orion and Ares, adding delays that could further jeopardize the 2015 availability and contribute to further losses of our highly skilled aerospace workforce. I, along with many of my colleagues, am not in favor of excessive government spending. But in this time of economic turmoil and growing international technological competitiveness, many of us are in agreement that America's space program is well established on a path that, if sustained, will ensure our role as the world leader in space exploration and exploitation for decades to come. By pursuing human spaceflight, we challenge our industry and inspire America to dream big and succeed. That is what leadership is all about. Other countries recognize the strategic importance of the soft power we gained in the world through our audacious leadership in human spaceflight. The political and technological stature of America has been earned through our space program, has now sought, is now sought by other nations eager to demonstrate their hard-won capabilities to the world. The International Space Station in orbit today is a remarkable achievement, 
bringing together the scientific and engineering talents and resources of many nations. That achievement would not have been possible without American leadership. But such leadership is built on trust that we will keep our commitments to our international partners. If we continue to underfund our space program, we risk losing the international trust and credibility that is vital for long-term success. Today, nearly 70% of the world's population was not alive to see Neil Armstrong walk on the moon. Their opinions will be shaped by what happens in the future, not what has happened in the past. We should not be in a race with China or any other country. We are the preeminent leader in space. But leadership is temporary. We should ensure that we take the necessary actions to remain the leader in human space flight. I want to thank the committee once again for this opportunity to share our minority views. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for, for reading that, and please uh, express our appreciation for the, uh, the letter itself. Will do. Thank you.